This photograph of Chicago was taken almost 60 miles away from Grand Mere State Park in Michigan. On a spherical Earth, this would be impossible. Using the Pythagorean theorem and the current dimensions of the Earth, the top of the tallest skyscraper should be 900 feet below the observable horizon, able to be seen for several miles past what is possible on the heliocentric model. And weapons guidance systems that are capable of sighting targets that would only be possible on a flat plane. We are accustomed to observing ships disappearing over the curve, but with modern consumer cameras, we can observe that this seems to be an optical illusion based on light reflection and the laws of perspective. Many of us tend to think the planet is too big to observe curvature, but the empirical evidence tells us that either the surface of the Earth is a flat plane or the planet is at least 100 times bigger than we are. Intriguing told. argument for flat earthers is Antarctica, the mysterious massive continent at our southern pole that nobody is allowed to explore. After sailing over 60,000 miles along the Antarctic coastline, Captain Cook was never able to complete the journey around the ice continent, which is supposed to be just under 12,000 miles around. Neither was James Clark Ross or the British ship Challenger. Nobody has ever successfully circumnavigated Antarctica. Many so-called flat earthers claim that these attempts failed because Antarctica is actually a massive ice barrier that surrounds the flat surface of the Earth. The azimuthal equidescent projection map produced by the U.S. Geological Survey has been used for centuries for the fact that all directions or azimuths are correct and all distances are at true scale. Studying this map, one can clearly see how man has been able to accurately circumnavigate the Earth on a flat plane model. And if it is in fact accurate, then it explains why after 60,000 miles, nobody has been able to completely circumnavigate Antarctica. Interestingly, this is also the map used by the United Nations.